So in the previous video, we created our connection string. Now we need to add the entity framework code first migration. The code first migration will generate the code that is needed to update our database. The database schema will be generated from the domain model that we created under our infrastructure folder. We have created a class named as application user that is inheriting from identity user. So as I told you earlier that you will see that all the properties that we created will be added to the database table columns. So for that, we need to first enable migrations. To enable migrations, go to your quick launch, search for package manager console. Click on your package manager and you should see this window added at the bottom. Here, you need to type in enable migrations. Once you press enter, Entity Framework will create a folder called as Enable Migrations. So we have successfully enabled migrations. Now if you see, there's a folder called as Migration that's added to your project. Within your Migrations folder, you can see a file called as Configuration CS. Under the Configuration CS, you will see the Configuration Constructor and you will see the seed method. What is the seed method? The seed method basically adds data to your database that is required in order to run and test your applications. The seed method, anything that you enter within the seed method will be added to your database because the code between the seed method will run when you enter the command update database and click enter. So now after you have enabled migrations, we need to add migrations. So we need to add another command that says add migrations. Now, when we add this, when we enter this command, you need to specify a message along with add migration. If you have used any version control like Git or TFS, you always know that when you commit your changes you always have to enter a message like initial commit or committing updating the updating the code but in this case i'm just creating a database so i'm going to say asp create db so i'm creating a db and i'm entering a message specific to what i'm doing so now i'm going to hit enter Now look at your migrations folder. You will see a new class will be added very soon to the migration folder. There it is. This class is basically contains the code that is needed to create the database tables. And within this class, you will see the name of the class is basically the message that you entered while creating, while adding the migrations. The number that you see here is the timestamp the date and the time when the when the class was created. Now, the code, as you see, it contains all the required code to create the database tables, the columns, and the columns are basically the properties. If you notice, the property first name, last name, user label, date join, and email have already been added. The properties that you didn't create also are added under the create table code. These properties were created by ASP.NET identity. As I told you, it comes with some pre-built properties. In case you wanted to extend your properties, you can create the class and the extended properties that we created in editing identity user class are present here. Now, let's create the database table because this is the code we need to run this code. To update the database, we need to type in the command update-database. Hit enter. As you see, 
the code within the up method and the code within the seed method within your configuration file will run with this update.database method. In case if you have any test code that you want to run, you can add it, add it to your seed method and it will be executed. So we have updated our database successfully. Now let's go ahead and test and check if our database was to created. To check if the database was created, let's open our SQL Server Management Studio and then go ahead and click on your databases. And there you can see that we have a database named as ASP.NET Identity. If I go ahead and check the tables, you will see we have a table for ASP net users and within the tables if you go ahead and check the columns you will also see that we have columns for first name last name user level date join email these are the columns that we created within our application user class and these columns have been added to our database they join user level last name first name so that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial I will show you how you can add sample data to your database and test if the database is connected correctly to your application